Welcome back or welcome to our channel. It's Serena from the Falco family where we make videos about education and lifestyle. We are the Falco family. Brian, Serena, Cameron, Kendall, and Savannah. A family of filmmakers exploring the truth about education. Learning to document our adventures in homeschool and life and tell stories of how we live and what we learn. Today I am back with another book haul. We're going to be working our way through another section of our library. The first one I have is a classic. It is Peter Pan. I actually don't remember reading Peter Pan when I was younger. All children except one grow up. Do you believe? Peter Pan and his fairy friend Tinkerbell fly with the three darling children to Neverland, a magical place filled with mermaids, magic, and mischief. But Captain Hook and his band of pirates lurk nearby, plotting revenge against Peter and his happy band of lost boys. So I'm excited to read it. Next up is another fantasy situation. This one is Willa Dean. So this one is more my younger son's speed, Kendall. The earth is old and we are not. And that is all you must remember. Um, I love how books can be so telling of the kids that read them oftentimes, the things that they select and what they enjoy. Um, he's read this one already. So he's got his little annotations, his little, you know, eat doggy ears all throughout the book and I'm excited to read it after him and then jump in and have discussion. So Willa Dean adores creatures of all kinds but her favorites are the most unlovable beast in the land, strange beasts known as screechers. The villagers of Perchance call them pests, even monsters, but Willa Dean believes the animals serve a vital role in the complicated web of nature. This is book one and book two in this series, The Secret of the Hidden Scrolls. So discover the secret of the hidden scrolls. Join siblings Peter and Mary and their dog Hank as they discover ancient scrolls and transport them back to exciting moments in Bible history. So um, I picked these up. I have the whole collection. I don't know where they are right now, but these are the ones that are in this haul. <laughs> The Train to Impossible Places. This was a book I picked up that was supposed to be a part of... Um, a read along that I didn't end up reading along with. I think also Savannah started it off but didn't um, continue on reading. So that happens a lot in our homeschool and lives. We'll pick a book up, start it a little bit, put it back because we're not quite ready ready yet. Sometimes we can be moody readers, sometimes not. So this is one of those things so far. A train that travels through impossible places, a boy trapped in a snow globe, and a girl who's about to go on the adventure of a lifetime. That's all I need to know. <laughs> so I have the train to impossible places. Now this is a book that I actually really loved when I was younger. I don't know how many of these books I've actually read but I definitely remember the first one. Um, so this is Rick Riordan's Percy Jackson and the Olympians. I was really big into um, fantasy and that's because I feel like it helped me think outside of the box and not take reality to like reality-esque-ish. <laughs> so Percy Jackson is about to be kicked out of a boarding school again. And that's the least of his troubles lately. Mythological monsters and the gods of Mount Olympus seem to be walking straight out of the pages of Percy's Greek mythology textbook and into his life. And worse, he's angered a few of them. Zeus's master lightning bolt has been stolen and Percy is the prime suspect. Now Percy and his friends have just 10 days to find and return Zeus's stolen property and bring peace to a warring Mount Olympus. But to succeed in his quest, Percy will have to do more than catch the true thief. He must come to terms with the father who abandoned him to solve the riddle of the oracle which warns him of betrayal by a friend and unravel a treachery more powerful than the gods themselves. Percy Jackson's. And this has been on my shelf for a very long time and none of my kids have picked it up. So <laughs> I like to give them the freedoms to pick and choose what they may. And this has just not been you know, a part of their choices. So we'll see how long it takes them to pick it up. Next up is a contemporary Each Tiny Spark, Be Brave and Light Up the World by Pablo. Pablo Artea. Oh, the heat. He's also the author of the epic fail of Arturo Zamora. Um, and we also have that one that'll be in another um, book haul. Amelia Torres has a wandering mind. Love that. <laughs> it's hard for her to follow along at school and sometimes she forgets to do what her mom or abuela asks. But she remembers what matters, a time when her family was whole and home made sense. 
Amelia expects that her life will get back to normal when dad returns from deployment. Instead, it unravels. Dad shuts himself in the garage to work on an old car. Amelia peeks in on him daily, mesmerized by his wielder. One day, dad calls Amelia over. Then he teaches her how to weld. And over time, flickers of her old dad reappear. But as Amelia finds a way to repair the relationship with her father at home, her community ruptures with some of her classmates, like her best friend Gus, at the center of the conflict. Each Tiny Spark is a tender story about asking big questions and being brave enough to reckon with the answers. Love all of that because the kids are really, I mean, we're all in transitioning phases no matter who we are. But um, I love being able to walk them through using stories like this to just kind of break down the pieces and um, iron out the feelings, sort through them, sort through the feelings, all of that other type of stuff. So this seems like one of those books that I can really uh, do that with as well. I have Caterpillar Summer. This is about a girl and her brother. Cat knows her younger brother Chicken the best. She knows that he loves sharks, that he does not like loud noises. Tags in his shirt are being called Henry and that sometimes he has bad days when only a good back rub will calm him. Cat is proud to be the glue holding their family together ever since daddy died and mom was ha mom had to work extra hard to support them. When her summer trip doesn't go as planned, Cat and Chicken must spend three weeks with grandparents they've never met in a place called Gingerbread Island. At first, she is wary of these strangers. How could they ever care for Chicken like she does? But life on the island feels different. It's easier, simpler, and Cat feels more like a kid than she has in a while. As she gets to know her grandparents, one thing is bothering her. Why haven't they been a part of her life before now? Of course, they say it's heartwarming, and this story is about family forgiveness um, and a summer they'll never forget. So the next book I have has been on my show for a while. It's one I picked up because I wanted to have a collection of his books, um, but I knew that he wasn't, you know, we weren't going to get around to reading it for a little bit of time. So I think we are getting a little closer to reading it eventually, but I have Swing. This is by Kwame Alexander with Mary Rand Hess. Um, we were best friends, rounding the bases, about to score. Everything was copacetic, Walt likes to say, until it wasn't. This is this is a book written in verse. And again, it's one of those things we just want to explore, those big feelings that people might be having and just kind of dissect, sort through them and see where they lay. So uh, that's all I really needed to know about this one for now. The next one I have is actually a nonfiction. It's called Mo's Bows. We've read a part of this so far and just kind of work our way through it slowly over time. Measure Cut, Stitch Your Way to Great Business, a Young Person's Guide to Startup Success, by Mo Bridges. Let a successful kidpreneur help you start a successful business. Just follow Mo's easy bowls of business to achieve your goals. Believe in yourself, take the opportunity to give back, work hard, study hard, and seek support from friends and family. I feel like this needs to happen more often where things are written in children's voices and they give you their experience. All right, next up on my nonfiction list, I have Becoming by Michelle Obama. This is another book that I have read. <laughs> this is another book that I have read via my husband, okay, because he gives cliff notes like no other. And basically, I can say I read it. So uh, this is the autobiography of uh, Michelle Obama, the former first lady of the United States. There's a lot I still don't know about America, about life about what the future might bring, but I do know myself. My father taught me to work hard, laugh often, and keep my word. My mother showed me how to think for myself and to use my voice. Together in our cramped apartment on the south side of Chicago, they helped me see the value in our story, in my story, in the larger story of our country. Even when it's not pretty or perfect, even when it's more real than you want it to be, your story is what you have, what you will always have. It is some Something to own. Next up, um, you've seen a couple of books by her before. This is Maybe Maybe Marisol Rainey. So will Marisol be brave today? Maybe. Will Marisol be brave tonight when it's super dark outside? Maybe. Will Marisol avoid daggers, the neighborhood's scary dog? Maybe. And her bossy classmate, Eva Smythe? Maybe. Will Marisol climb the huge tree in her backyard, the tree that absolutely everyone climbs, including her very best friend Jada? Absolutely not. Never. No. 
but maybe. <laughs> this is the second book. I don't own the first one, but we want to. The first one is Ways to Make Sunshine, and this one is Ways to Grow a Love, and then I think there is a third one um, that will go along with the Ryan Hart stories that is coming out at the end of this year that we will add to our collection as soon as we can. But this one, love it. Short, sweet, simple story about a girl named um, Ryan and the way that she is working through family, friends, life. This one is about looking forward to summer vacation. I can't really tell you like what's going on going on in this one because the first one matters and then it leads into the second one. Really sweet story. The next one I have is a mystery. <laughs> Let me tell you. I'll just give you a little quick. This was not my favorite <laughs> but the kids love it. The kids love this story they love this series we have all but i think one in this green glass house series or collection it's winter time at green glass house the creaky smugglers inn is always quiet during this season and 12 year old milo the innkeeper's adopted son plans to spend his holidays relaxing but on the first icy night of vacation out of nowhere the guest bell rings then it rings again and again soon milo's home is bursting with odd secretive guests each one of them bearing a strange story that is somehow connected to the rambling house as objects go missing and tempers flare, Milo and Medi, the cook's daughter, must decipher clues and untangle the web of deepening mysteries to discover the truth about Green Glass House and themselves. Kids' favorites don't always equal your favorites, and that is okay. This is our first copy, first edition of Harry Potter. We are currently reading through the Harry Potter books, the first and the second book. One of my favorites of this year so far um, is Amari and the Night Brothers by B.B. Austin. This is a fantasy. Oh, it's so magical, so enchanting. <laughs> this is a fantasy slash mystery um, about Amari Peters. And she's never stopped believing that her missing brother Quentin is alive. Not even when the police told her otherwise or when she got in trouble for standing up to bullies who said that he was gone for good. So when she finds a ticking briefcase in his closet containing a nomination for a summer tryout, at the Bureau of Supernatural Affairs. She's certain the secretive organization holds the key to locating Quentin. If only she can wrap her head around the idea of magicians, fairies, aliens, and other supernatural creatures all being real. That's halfway through the synopsis. Love it. The second book in this series comes out towards the end of this year and we're really looking forward to reading that one as well. The Girl Who Speaks Bear by Sophie Anderson. This is a story about 12-year-old Yanka has never felt at home in her small village. She was discovered in a bear cave as a baby and the other children mock her for her unusual size and strength. She is desperate to discover the truth about her past and learn why mysterious forest creatures keep calling to her, but her protective foster mother won't let her venture too far into the dangerous woods. She wakes up one morning to discover to her heart that her legs have transformed into that of a bear's. She knows she has no choice, but she must leave her village before her neighbors shun her as a monster. So she leaves her home and enters the snow forest with her pet weasel in order to gather clues about her mysterious past. So this is one that Savannah started that was not, she was not feeling then. And again, that's okay because we just shelf it and then we see if we pick it back up later. This is one that Savannah and I love. We buddy read this one together and we really enjoyed it. Uh, we have a couple of books by this author, Cassie Athelt. Um, this one is Maybe a Fox. This is a bit of a magical realism. It's following two sisters. Um, what do I say about them? <laughs> I have to get better at uh, sharing what these are about. But Jules adores her older by one year sister, Sylvie. Sylvie's beautiful like their mother. A Supreme maker of tiny snow families and fast, faster than fast, so fast that when Sylvie darts into the woods before the school bus comes one morning, Jules doesn't realize that it may be the last time she sees her sister. At the same moment, a fox cub is born, a shadow fox, spirit, an animal, and one. From the minute the cub opens her eyes, she senses something very wrong. She senses someone, Jules. The fate of Jules and the fox club lays together with burning wishes and shadowy ties are about to collide. We loved this one <laughs> by the same author. This is the other one by that same author that we have. This one, Kendall read um, The True Blue Scouts of Sugar Man Swamp. Raccoon Brothers, Bingo, and Jemiah are the newest recruits of the official Sugar Man Swamp Scouts. 
This opportunity to serve the sugar man, the master creature that rules over the swamp and delights and delicious sugar cane, is an honor. Yes, it is. Um, and in fact, all the critters in the swamp rely heavily on the intel of these hardworking scouts. 12-year-old Champ, on the other hand, is not a member of any such or organizations, but he does know the cane break lullaby and how to fry a sugar pie like nobody's business. Plus, he loves his swamp, something fierce. He'll do anything to protect it, and good for that, because there is trouble headed for this here swamp. Trouble from every direction. Suddenly, the fate of the swamp and everyone who lives there depends on Champ and the scouts. A couple of non-fictions I have. Creating Innovators, this is the making of young people who will change the world by Tony Wagner. This is going in my collection of um, education studies books. So far, so good. I've made my way through, not quite half, but a few of the chapters. He's really just um, an education expert. He provides a powerful rationale for developing an innovation driven economy. He explores what parents, teachers, and employers must do to develop the capacities of young people to become innovators. Enjoying this one so far. The next one I have is The Inconvenient Indian. Of course, it's important for me to have a collection of textbook style resources that I can pull from when we are um, trying to wrap our minds around and understanding history more and more. The Inconvenient Indian, A Curious Account of Native People in North America by Thomas King. I've made my way through several chapters of this one as well and I have been really enjoying it. Um, just listening. I feel like that's how I approach it. The, the goal is not for me to sit down and dissect everything, but it's I just kind of, the vibe I have is just as if you would have someone in front of you that was just telling you stories and telling you of things that they know, that they're passionate about, that they, you know, ideas that they have and just listening. So I've been enjoying reading through this one. I have um, something to add to our Devotion Collection by Melanie Schenkel, I think it is. Fearless Faith, 100 Devotions for Girls. Um, while I do believe in having devotions for girls and devotions for boys, I do also like to consider them for both. So it's nice for me to get uh, devotions ahead of time, like before the time that I would hand it off to them for them to walk through so that I can see how I can adjust and maybe um, make it fit for more than just girls or more than just boys, if that makes any sense. But um, this is just about finding out what God wants for your life, what and activities to do with your friends, encouraging messages and questions. Fearless Faith is the perfect devotional for a girl like you. The next one I have is Roar Like a Lion, 90 Devotions to a Courageous Faith. This book is beautiful. I grabbed it because it looked a lot like the graphic that I used for Kindle's 11th birthday and I was like this will be a nice little addition to his birthday box so I've got my stack of picture books to end us off here I have the proudest blue a story of a hijab um of hijab and family somebody tell me that this book isn't beautiful you can't because it is so gorgeous <laughs> we really enjoy this one. Next up, I have Florence and her fantastic family tree. The celebration of family in all its forms when a school assignment involves Florence's large blended family uh, gets complicated. She realizes what makes her family so special. And then the last one I have is Our Shed, um, a father-daughter building story, which you know I love. Look at the back of that. Isn't it so pretty? Um, in this story, a father teaches his daughter how to build a backyard shed for this for storing the necessities of family life, from a lawnmower to bikes and sleds. For each practical element the father brings to the project, his daughter adds her own imaginative creative spin. And in the end, they are both happy with their collaboration. Just as the father passes building skills onto his daughter, so does his daughter eventually pass those skills onto her own son as they all work together to fix up the aging shed. I kind of like really, really like this and can already think about projects that I can attach to it that would, you know, just make the everyday more, make it make more sense, friends. You'll see what I mean in future videos to come. That's my book haul for today. Let us know. Do you have any of these? Have you read any of these? Are any of these more on your list um, to check out sometime soon? Let us know all the things in the comment section below. Thanks again for watching. Remember that life is so very full of lessons and our goal, as always, is to live in tomorrow. Don't forget to subscribe!